So thank you everyone for joining us excuse me, this evening. Um, this is our fifth week of the coach socialization series and we will be continuing this series for the entire duration of the isolation period due to coronavirus. Um, so we started this initiative with the intent of providing a platform for coaches to connect and to, to connect with each other and continue to learn and learn from a variety of professionals on a variety of topics. So tonight we have Ashley with us, who is a mental performance consultant and a recent doctoral graduate who studied sport and exercise psychology at the University of Windsor. So tonight she'll be talking to us about how to promote mental performance during these challenging times. And uh, like mentioned earlier, we will open up the mics at the end if you have any questions for her. Um, so we definitely wanna keep this an open discussion at the end, but for now I'll pass it on to Ashley to take us away. Awesome, thanks Kirsty. Everybody hear me okay? Okay, perfect. Um, so just to give you a, a, a brief, brief, brief uh, little background on myself, um, I, I work as a mental performance consultant, as Kirsty mentioned, now I'm currently located in New Brunswick. Um, so I do uh, a lot of work with the local universities here to me. Um, and then I've also worked with a lot of the provincial programs um, within our province, um, as well as just locally, um, a lot of the, the amateur athletes or those, you know, some handful of athletes who are also um, working towards, um, you know, different levels of sport who are currently maybe playing uh, in other areas, um, you know, at other, other, other schools that they're at. Um, in talking with Kirsty, I absolutely love this initiative. Um, in speaking about um, social distancing, um, a lot of people in sort of the, the mental performance, um, I guess, group um, have talked a lot about the idea that 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 language using that language social distancing um, can also can, can, can almost be a little bit confusing um, and can create some maybe unrealistic uh, I don't know roadblocks around what might be currently beneficial um, you know it's really much more physical distancing um, than it is social distancing and so really any opportunity that we have to be able to stay connected socially while still um, you know understanding and respecting the physical distancing parameters that are, are being put in place by experts um, is going to, to be to be really important in terms of us you know receiving social support and continuing to build and grow and, and sustain those social connections that we have with our athletes and with our coaches um, and with other professionals that are within our area as well as just family and friends uh, also and so what i wanted to do tonight in terms of this this speaker series and i want to thank kirsty and, and canadian sports center atlantic for involving me and having me out is just talk a little bit about promoting mental performance during challenging times um, and especially speak to you know the challenging time that, that we're currently facing with COVID-19. The kind of strategies or, or topics that we're going to cover um, very much relate to both athletes and coaches. Um, so I thought that that's what I'd try to do is really kind of get a, a variety. I think there's maybe four or five kind of key things that I really picked out to, to be able to start our discussion tonight. Um, and that's really what I wanted it to be is sort of a start of a discussion. So especially because each of us are going to be experiencing, um, you know, these times right now in a different way with, you know, ourselves personally, uh, you know, as individuals, as coaches, as well as our athletes and, you know, what space we're in with them right now. Um, I wanted to, uh, highlight a few areas but then be able to um, you know keep it to the sort of 30 minutes I think that Kirsty had mentioned and then um, you know broaden it out to a discussion afterwards so that if you guys have anything specific that either you can share on what you're currently doing um, or you know ask questions of myself or others in the group I'd love for that to be really where we spend kind of the, the bulk of the time towards the, the latter half so Without further ado, um, in speaking of promoting mental performance during challenging times, I think it's really important that we take into consideration, um, you know, what sort of situation we are in currently. Um, it is very much an uncertain time, and that's for ourselves as well as for our athletes. And so the direction that I'm taking tonight is to talk about mental performance and how we can take this current time as maybe an opportunity to practice different mental performance uh, you know, skills and strategies. 
but we really need to be cognizant of where our athletes are currently and, and also where we are. Uh, and in saying that, just sort of to, to really reflect on whether or not it's the best option for your athletes or for yourself. And what I mean by that is you might be currently working with athletes who are, uh, you know, part of that frontline staff right now who are maybe working, um, you know, whether it be in, in hospitals or daycares that are, you know, deemed essential services or are working, um, you know, in, in the food industry or the service industry for some of those, you know, frontline essential workers um, who, who are deemed as such. And so really for them right now, um, a focus on sport might not be a priority. Um, and likewise for us. So it, the things that I want to talk about tonight, um, I don't want to put them in the context of these are things that we must do or that we need to be sharing with our athletes. Um, I really want it to come from a place of Here's an opportunity that if it's right for you um, and if it's right for your athletes at this time, um, it could be a really great opportunity to use the current situation that we're in to be able to sort of take this time to work on this aspect of our performance. So how can we promote mental performance during these challenging times? We're gonna talk about four or five things um, specifically related to this domain um, and then jump off into our discussion. First and foremost, I'm sure you've maybe heard this before. Certainly, uh, you know, as coaches, we talk about this a lot uh, in relation to our athletes and, and how they compete on a day-to-day, -day, you know, week-to-week, month-to-month, year-to-year basis. Um, but it's really important, especially in these challenging times, to be able to focus and refocus because it's going to take refocusing and constantly sort of reevaluating and sort of recentering, coming to a place of, of perspective on things that we can control. Um, really a, you know, a characteristic of some of the challenging times that we may face, specifically right now with COVID-19, is the fact that they are so uncertain, right? Um, and especially if we look at our current dynamic, um, really there's a lot of things that are happening right now that certainly within our you know, time period, our generation is unprecedented. Um, you know, it, you, you gotta go back a while to really find a place where Olympics have been canceled or you know, sport across professional and amateur status have been canceled. Uh, schools have been closed uh, at all levels you know, across really globally um, for a lot of these scenarios. Uh, and so the, with that uncertainty comes with it a lot of uh, things that, that, that are out of our control. You may have seen this graphic. It's really great. I've seen it on a few different presentations um, that I've personally been involved in as well, just looking to you know, do professional development for myself. Um, but related specifically to what we're in right now, things that you know, are absolutely out of our control and, and somewhat we need to be able to distance ourselves or, or you know, be able to let go of include things like how long this is gonna last. Right? Um, we just don't know day to day. We need to be able to trust those that are in you know, a position to be able to make those decisions. Um, but you know, for the rest of us, it's, it's just a day by day activity as, as with them as well. How others react, right? We, we, we can't control that right now. Um, other people's motives for things, predicting what's going to happen, um, the actions of others, if others are going to follow these physical social distancing rules. Um, that for me has been a big thing, right? I mean, you're going outside or walking around um, and you're taking your responsibility seriously, but then those around you may not be. Um, this was a funny one that I, you know, that I thought of or that was in this that early on, right, the amount of toilet paper that's going to be in the superstore um, or, you know, just groceries in general. I think yeast is the main thing right now that it's hard to find yeast, um, hard to find, um, you know, those Lysol wipes, things of that nature. So there's a lot of adjusting that needs to be done, but there are a lot of things that are within our control. Um, so broadly, right, our attitudes, our efforts, our behaviors, those are the three things that I continuously reinforce with athletes that I work with. Um, but looking kind of beyond those general categories, there's things like finding fun things to do at home, you know, really being cognizant of the type of media that we're taking in um, and turning off the news at appropriate times or when we feel like we need a break, limiting social media, um, you know, taking care of, of yourself and others in terms of, uh, you know, what you're doing physically, uh, emotionally, 
um, to be able to, to, to stay grounded. Um, also how you're following different guidelines and the positive attitude that you bring. This is just sort of generally, um, but also we can bring it back to sort of talking about specifically related to our context in athletics. There are some things that are, again, outside of our control that coaches and athletes might be dealing with right now. And I just put up a few, but please feel free to also jot some down in the chat box if you'd like to, that you may be dealing with or you know your athletes are dealing with. Um, but I know that athletes that I've been working with, some of them are dealing with school moving to an online platform. And for them, that's been really challenging. Um, some individuals are, are really you know, well-versed with using these online platforms and others are finding it really tough and really difficult. Um, others, uh, you know, closing of training facilities has been a big issue. Um, so, you know, not being able to, uh, you know, get to a, a gym or a training facility, not being able to access the types of equipment that you were able to before. Um, if you were at a certain point you know, in your training, not having those resources available could be a really difficult situation. As we talked about earlier, across professional and amateur sports, we've seen cancellations. So you know, Olympics have been postponed, which is somewhat unprecedented. Um, you know, we have uh, all sport in general that has been canceled for the most part, for the remaining of the season. Um, I know around New Brunswick and, and areas that there's been provincial programs that have been canceled or postponed that athletes were really looking forward to, um, whether they were provincial training camps or selection camps that were going to be held, tournaments, those things have, for the most part, been canceled. Um, I think upwards of, you know, till August, there might be some things that are still in consideration, but for the most part, a lot of it's been, been postponed or canceled. Um, and there's also potentially for you coaches have been professional opportunities that may be in jeopardy. Um, whether it was, you know, opportunities for professional development where you'd be traveling um, to different conferences or to different opportunities, whether it was opportunities to coach at one of these provincial camps or, or you know, one of these uh, tournaments or teams that have been coming up. Um, a lot of those situations are happening right now that bring with it a lot of uncertainty that are certainly out of our control. Um, now, just saying, okay, focus on these things and don't focus on these things uh, is a lot easier said than done. Um, so as we go through, what I'd like to do is be able to um, really talk about strategies around how we can sort of refocus and where we can focus our attention to take some sort of committed action towards you know, the behaviors that we want to be able to pursue during these challenging times. Now, the one other thing that I want to mention before moving on from this idea of focusing and refocusing is the idea that in adversity is where we're going to experience growth, right? And so for athletes, we constantly see this on a day-to-day -day basis in training, uh, you know, in practice, in their conditioning sessions, in their, uh, you know, games that they're going to be playing, where we constantly, you know, uh, face this adversity and then find a way to work through it, evaluate it on the other end, readjust for the next time that we're gonna face another adversity. Right now, where we're in this situation of, you know, of a similar kind of stressor or a similar kind of uncertainty, um, you know, creating some pressure around what we're doing right now, we can take this opportunity as just that, an opportunity to be able to practice this idea of focusing on what we can control. So athletes may not view it as such, um, but the same way that we're going to, uh, you know, try to keep distractions like crowd noise or like, uh, you know, focusing on other people's performance versus our own performance, or, you know, focusing on um, rankings or outcomes versus focusing on the process of right now, we can practice those focus and refocus on what we can control in the current climate that we have. So even though it might not be specifically related to sport in this way, um, we can certainly bring it back to being an educational opportunity to practice this part of mental performance. Okay. Number two, it's really important that we just generally as individuals, as coaches, but also that we help our athletes maintain a routine and a structure. Um, now there's a little asterisk around this. This routine and structure is likely not going to be the routine and structure that you were used to 
prior to all of these restrictions coming into place. Um, so if we think about, you know, maybe a, an athlete that we worked with recently who was, uh, let's say, a middle school or a high school student, their daily routine was highly structured around getting up in the morning, having breakfast, getting ready for school. The entire day is structured um, from going to classes, from having the, you know, their lunch or their snacks or their recess, um, to following that. Maybe in the evening, they're having you know, their, you know, their, their, their supper, going to a practice or two, uh, coming home, doing schoolwork, going to bed. Like Their day is, is relatively planned out, as was ours. Right now, what we're seeing, where a lot of our daily structures have been shut down, people are having a lot of free time on their hands. Some people do really well with this, um, and others find it very challenging. And so what we need to be able to think about and consider is what is our new routine going to look like? And it may take some time to find something that works for us. Now, an important component to, to really kind of grasp is the idea and, and get across to our athletes is that we're not talking about structuring every second of every day right that's not the point behind it but we do want to be able to carve out um, what are going to be sort of priority activities that we really want to sort of build our day around so we're still going to have free time we're absolutely going to have me time um, we should work in especially during these challenging times uh, you know activities that focus on well-being so whether it's you know seeking out a new hobby a new activity whether it's uh, you know finding a, a new way to um, be physically active that may not be specifically related to you know practicing in your sport, whether it's reading a book, what, I mean, regardless of what those well-being activities are, it's really important to work those in. So what are those priority activities is what I, I am having conversations with my athletes right now. What are the priority areas that you really want to include in your day? So meals obviously are going to be a thing, um, you know, maybe training in, in some capacity. It's likely going to look a little different than it was before, but training might be in there. Maybe some mindfulness or some time to really sit and breathe and reflect could be in there or to journal. Um, you know, you might have uh, maybe time to, you know, just generally, you know, be connected with your friends, whether it be over Zoom, whether it be over a phone call, whether it, you know, all of those platforms, online platforms that we've been using. Um, those priority areas, we can then work into our daily activities uh, so that we have some type of structure in our day. Because as, as humans, we'd like to have a little bit of predictability. A really great resource uh, that I wanted to draw your attention to is uh, O-Waves. I don't know if any of you have heard of this or have seen it, uh, but it's a really great project. There's actually an app that's associated with it. Um, I think I think it's free. Um, but what's really cool and what you may be able to direct your athletes to do, just to start them brainstorming on what are some main key activities that they can have in their day, is if you go to this uh, website, there is a link or a, a drop down menu called daily plans, I think is, is, the, is, the, is the, the link at the top. And if you click on that, you can search by a number of different professions, a number of different areas. You can see different examples of various Olympians. You can search by sport. You can search by different professions. Like uh, I know for myself, there's you know mental performance consultants, there's professors, there's uh, teachers, there's, I mean, there's like, uh, there's a whole wealth of different examples, students that they have in there. And you can go in and you can see different daily schedules that these individuals have. Now, is an Olympian schedule going to be, you know, closely related to what, you know, an amateur schedule is going to be? Likely not. Um, but it is a really great idea to be able to reinforce this idea of having some type of schedule of prioritizing certain activities within your day and then allowing your athletes to go and look at some templates, some examples um, to really sort of highlight what might work for them. And then they can come up with their own sort of prioritized activities of what they want to include in their day and try as best they can to slot them into some times where they want to stay committed to following through and being accountable to those actions. Um, because 
uh, when this you know ends we're going to go back into a routine um, hopefully similar to what we had before maybe even more healthy than what we had before um, so it's a good way to keep practicing that it also helps with well-being to be able to stay on a schedule especially a schedule that is related to eating at proper times to hydrating properly throughout the day to getting um, proper physical activity, um, to be a prioritize mental well-being and physical well-being activities, and making sure that we're waking up and that we're going to bed at a relatively scheduled time and a decent time. Um, so right now it's really easy to get lost in, you know, I don't know, binging on Netflix or Crave until three o'clock in the morning or, you know, playing whatever video game until four o'clock in the morning, um, and then trying to have, you know, a, a scheduled the next day, that's not going to pan out. Um, so it's really important that we try to keep some of these priority activities consistent from day to day. The next thing that I wanted to speak to quickly is that our athletes right now and ourselves as well likely have to revisit and revise some of our goals. So I know maybe a lot of you have heard of SMART goals, so the idea of having specific goals, making sure they're measurable, making sure they're attainable and adjustable, uh, making sure they're realistic and timely, and there's all kinds of variations around that. I know there's SMARTer goals where they add a few on and there's different variations. But what I really want to focus on here is that A of the adjustable, right? Um, right now, where there are so many things that are uncontrollable going around that may be putting restrictions on how we're able to train or the types of activities that we're able to do, some of the goals that we may have set along the way may need to be revised so that they can more appropriate more appropriately fit within the parameters of how we're currently being able to execute our type of training or go about our day-to-day -day activities. And so for our athletes, it's a really great opportunity to sit down with them or you know, as coaches to sit down and say, okay, what were the goals that I had prior to going into the current situation? Are there any that need to be adjusted? And I'll give you a couple of examples of goals that I've worked with athletes recently that just needed to be tweaked a bit. Um, a couple of athletes that I worked with were currently doing a specific training program that was provided to them by the provincial organization. And so they had fitness testing at the outset, and then they were going to revisit their fitness testing partway through their training, which didn't end up happening because of the restrictions that were put in place. And so what we had done was after the initial fitness testing, they had chose two to three of the activities that were being tested, and they created goals, performance goals, around where they wanted to be at the next testing. So just randomly, let's take a plank, for example. So they may have been doing a certain length of plank, um, and they wanted to improve on that plank by, I don't know, 30 seconds or a minute, minute and a half, whatever it was for each athlete. Now, a plank is fine. You can go out, you can plank, right, uh, you know, in your living room, you can plank in your kitchen, you can plank in your bedroom, you can plank out in the front yard. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, that's something that you absolutely can continue right now. But there were other activities, whether it was a deadlift, whether it was a bench press, whether it was, you know, something that needed a certain type of equipment, you know, a rowing machine, uh, or a certain bike, uh, where a lot of the athletes don't have access to those right now. And so what we did was we worked with the strength and conditioning coaches that were giving the fitness test to be able to revise their goals or revise their training so that they could either, um, you know, meet the new goal that they set or that they could change the parameters around their training to still keep that goal in, you know, it, within their ability to be able to reach. Um, and so this is a really important thing to be able to do. Just quickly related to goals, the reason why they're important is because they help direct our attention to the task at hand. They help increase motivation and mobilize our efforts. They help prolong our persistence, especially in the face of challenge and adversity. And they also help us foster um, new learning experiences or new learning strategies. And so, to keep these goals in mind and to keep our athletes uh, you know, focused on goals can be really beneficial during these times because it gives them a type of focus to be able to work towards. Um, and it also keeps them hopefully engaged in, in the physical activities that they're doing um, to be able to then reach their goals uh, you know, more long-term. 
The other thing that I'll mention before moving on is that the types of goals right now are really important to keep in mind. So generally we talk about process goals, performance goals, and outcome goals. Outcome goals are the ones that we most often set. And these are goals that really focus on that social comparison. And they're usually those long-term goals that are based on the competitive results. So they might be something like, um, you know, winning an event or achieving a certain rank, uh, you know, placing at a, at a certain you know, level in a, in a tournament or in a race that's upcoming, you know, what have you. Right now, the outcome goals can seem somewhat uncertain because of the fact that we don't know when or in what capacity a lot of our sports are going to be returning. And so athletes may feel, and we may feel, a little bit sort of up in the air right now around when our outcome goals are going to actually be able to be reached or in place. Um, so just as an example, you might have had an outcome goal to, I don't know, be selected for a provincial team. And that provincial team might not be having their tryouts when we thought they were. They may be pushed back, postponed, they may be canceled altogether, and it might be a different way that that team's being selected. And so what we really wanna do right now with athletes or what I've been working with athletes to do is while we understand that the outcome goals are still there, um, also understand that there may be some uncertainty around when those goals are going to be able to be realized. So to work backwards and focus on the process, what can we do right now to continue to take a step forward towards hopefully being able to achieve those goals more long-term when they come into a little bit more focus. So in relation to that, we can focus on the performance goals, which are goals that are really focused on improving or attaining personal performance standards. So similar to what we were talking about just previously. So maybe we have a certain fitness goal that is a, you know, a standard that we set ourselves and we want to be able to build on that personal standard. So maybe this week I can do a plank for a minute. Next week or two weeks from now, I wanna be able to do a minute and a half. I'm not comparing it to anybody else. This is a personal performance standard against myself. And then we may also be able to focus more readily on process goals, which are really specific behaviors that are necessary for successful performance. Um, this also may come in a different form. We're not practicing every day like we were before, um, but depending on you know, the situation that the athletes are in, they may still be able to, let's say, work on their foul shot um, in their yard, or they may still be able to uh, focus on, you know, uh, a wrist shot or a slap shot or a backhand in hockey, um, you know, using their net out in their yard. It may take a different form, um, but it's still our goals that we can set. So maybe they want to get up every morning, go outside, take 20 wrist shots using proper form um, before they go on with their day. And that's a great goal to be able to set to keep taking those steps towards improvement. And just before we move on from this, it's also important to stress to ourselves and our athletes to have a little bit of sort of self-compassion um, around setting these goals and as well as maintaining the routine and the structure. Because things are so uncertain right now and are so up in the air, there are a lot of pressures and a lot of anxiety that may come with that. And so sometimes, you know, in a, in a day, um, you know, there, we may have planned to do certain things, but, be, you know, because of the certain circumstances, they may be thrown off kilter a bit. Uh, that's okay, right? We want to be able to stay accountable and stay committed as best we can. Um, but certainly there's some room for flexibility in there, depending on what day, what each day dictates and what we may need that day. All right. Um, next. It's a great opportunity, especially for those sports that may have just finished, to evaluate current strengths and areas that are in need of improvement. And this goes directly uh, in line with the goals that we just talked about. So there may be an opportunity to sit down following the season, or if you're in an off season right now, or even if you should be starting your actual season, but you're unable to, it could be a great time to sit down and say, okay, where are we at currently? What are my strengths? What are my areas of improvement? And then out of those areas of improvement, where can be some places that I can set some goals to be able to work on those areas specifically with the resources that I currently have available to me? 
a great way to be able to do this is to uh, walk your athletes through or yourself through what we call a performance profile. Some of you may have heard of this before. There's different iterations uh, and different kind of levels of a performance profile, but I'll just talk you through a really basic way to do a performance profile to get started. Wow, I just looked at my window and it's like a snowstorm. There was nothing and now it's a snowstorm with high winds. Talk about, talk about uncertainty. Um, okay, so when we talk about a performance profile, um, there, there's a lot of benefits that surround this. And athletes have talked about the idea that doing a performance profile can really help raise your level of self-awareness can help athletes decide what they need to work on, um, can help create motivation and accountability around an athlete's uh, need to, to improve, helps provide direction for goal setting, which we just talked about, um, helps create a framework to be able to monitor and evaluate performance as we go along, and also helps athletes take responsibility for their development. So what is it? Performance profile is essentially a way that we can take stock of our areas of strength and improvement. So what you would do is you would start by sitting down with your athletes or yourself and brainstorm all of the different, you know, areas of focus or areas in need for you to be able to perform at your best. So what are the skills? What are the time? You can think about it in those four categories, right? What, what's technical skills? What are tactical skills? What are mental skills? Um, and what are physical skills, right? Our strength and conditioning. And what are the areas that we need in our sport, in my position, to be able to perform at my best? So I have an example here um, from uh, the, the Weston article that's cited below. Um, but you see here, this is, I believe, from rugby. So they talked about, okay, there's tackling and fitness and strength, speed, uh, there's change of pace, um, there is uh, confidence, there's mental focus, there's motivation, um, there's, you know, uh, knowledge from, oh, kicking from hand, um, there's place kicking, uh, catching, right? So all the different areas, either technically, tactically, mentally, or physically, that um, allow you, sunny and 14, Teresa, nice. <laughs> I am not that right now. Um, those different ways to be able, you know, those different skills that you need um, to be able to be able to perform at your best in your sport. Once you've really had a good list, a good brainstorm of all the different areas, and I would actually even, even maybe on here, so you can see they noted fitness as a category. You might even want to challenge your athletes to go into a little bit more detail. What is it about your fitness? Is it your flexibility? Is it your aerobic, your anaerobic capacity? Um, you know, they included strength on there. Is it your agility? So maybe even, you know, breaking it down into a little bit more detail there could also be beneficial. Once you've done that, you may want to narrow that list down, um, depending on the age of the athlete, to have sort of a manageable list. So you might want to take 10 to 15, 15 to 20. Um, again, depending on the level of the athlete and how, um, you know, how experienced they are in doing this type of evaluation, uh, how experienced they are in setting goals, um, you might want to vary the amount of focus that they have. The next step you would do after you have your final list is you would say, okay, ideally, um, you know, you would want to perform at likely, let's just say for, for simplicity, at a 10. Okay? Then you would take stock and you would say, currently, where do I feel I am at in relation to this skill? So tackling, maybe I'm a four. Fitness, I feel I'm a six. Uh, you know, maybe in terms of confidence, I feel like I'm a 10. Or maybe mental focus, I'm like a two. And you would go through and you would take sort of a personal stock of where you're at. You could also take it a step further, depending on you know, the level of maturity of your athlete, and you could also evaluate them. So that you kind of have a little bit of a, a comparison. You could say, okay, where do you think you are? Where do I think you are? How do we compare? Um, talk through it, and it could be a really great sort of development in terms of self-awareness uh, on where those developmental areas are needed. Then what you would do is you would 
go through, find out where your areas of improvement are needed, so kind of where those low marks are, and you would choose maybe three to four to really focus on and to set goals and goal achievement strategies to be able to work towards. So we'd say, okay, my confidence is an area that I want to work on right now. Is that feasible? Absolutely, because we can do mental performance training while we're in this context in terms of, okay, what can we do? Maybe keep a victory log, maybe go back and do a strength audit, things of that nature, practice, preparation, to be able to improve my level of confidence. For fitness or strength, you may need to be able to tweak, to be able to use the resources that you currently have, um, but you can kind of find the areas in need of development, and then we can work forward to be able to set goals, to be able to achieve those, and then work those goal achievement strategies into our daily routines and our structure. And then we start to create sort of this committed action towards what we want to focus on rather than focusing on all of these uncontrollable factors. So we may get into a routine or a habit of worrying about the fact that, oh, I don't know when I'm gonna get back together with my team. Are these tryouts gonna happen? Is this competition gonna happen? And we take a step back and we say, okay, where are the areas that I want to improve on? Where are the areas that I'm good at? What are some goals that I can set around that? And what are some committed actions that I can put into place to start working towards my daily process of reaching some of those outcome goals when those come into more focus? Okay, I think there's two left and then we'll open up to questions. Oh, there's one left. So the last thing right now is a really great opportunity to be able to sort of reflect or revise or sort of revisit what our values are and what our why is, right? Um, we talked earlier that really focusing on mental performance or physical performance right now um, is really dependent on the athlete, dependent on the coach and what their current situation is and how, um, you know, how, uh, how prepared they feel to be able to sort of tackle those things right now. Um, but it's also a great opportunity to be able to be able to take a step back, um, whether that be to take a step back from actual training or to take a step back just sort of mentally to reflect on why it is that you play your sport, why it is that you're investing in it, what is it about that sport that really draws you to it? What's your passion? Um, what's drawing you there to kind of fuel that fire again? Um, kind of set a little bit of a reset button. Also in line with that, um, it's a really great opportunity to take stock of what your values are and really set those out so that we can start taking those committed actions towards living out our values. So if we think of a, you know, an organization or you know, just a, a business of any sort, they always have their values. So that idea of, okay, we promote safety, respect, integrity, honesty, and teamwork. Individuals can have values as well that we work towards. We could say, okay, I really value honesty. I really value commitment. I really value bravery. I really value, uh, you know, uh, learning, continuous learning from mistakes. Once we have a list of these really core values to us, or as a coach, we can think about this in terms of ourselves or our team generally, and say, okay, in those are my values, then what are the behaviors that I want to display to be able to really take committed action towards living out those values? As an athlete, if I say that, you know, bravery is something that's really important to me, or accountability is something that's really important to me, then I can A, take stock of, okay, this past season or these last, you know, few months, have I been living out this value? What behaviors show me that I'm living out this value? And then we can say, Okay, perfect. What behaviors do I need to continue to do? Or what behaviors do I need to change so that next season or, you know, when we get back together or just day to day as I'm living out right now, I'm ensuring that I'm playing out those values, that I'm taking those values off the wall, and that I'm putting those values into practice. Right? Um, and that's something that we can do right now because we do have the time to be able to really sit down and reflect on what our why is for playing as well as what our values are that are really driving our behaviors and driving our actions as athletes. Now, reflecting on all of these areas, um, it's also a really great opportunity to be able to work mental skills training into our daily routine. So whether it be the goal setting or whether it be an area of improvement, we can work on things like our daily self-talk habits, 
like our use of imagery, which is super important right now because some of our athletes may not be able to physically go out and do their sport the same way that they were before. Using imagery systematically is a really great way to supplement some of those uh, training hours that we may be missing out on. Um, you know, some sports, it might be easier to go into the yard and shoot a basketball if you have a net or to go out and practice shooting, like we said, with hockey or throwing a football or, you know, taking, you know, going for jogs, but some sports that might not be possible. So using imagery is a really great way to use that as well. Um, so what I'd love to do now is just have more of a discussion, open it up to you guys. If there's anything that you guys have questions about related to those current challenges and how we can better, you know, focus on these areas or other areas that you have questions about, or if you guys have interesting stories to share on how you're staying committed or what you're doing to sort of navigate these challenging times, I'd love to hear that as well. So um, yeah, Kirsty or anybody, if you guys wanna chat or chime in, please feel free. Yeah, thank you so much, Ashley. That's great. Um, you know, we've had a lot of sessions over the past five weeks, and it seems like a lot of them always come down to the why. Like, it's such a an important part of being a coach and just being a person in general is, like, knowing your why and knowing your values. And I think, like you said, it's a great time. Uh, a lot of us have downtime right now to reflect on our values and start implementing these best practices. Um, so on that note, does anyone have any questions? Uh, you can open up your mics and uh, ask away. Or if you wanted to throw in a chat box as well, you can do that too. Yeah, for sure. Either or. All right. Doesn't seem like we have any questions, uh, but I'll be sticking around for a little bit if anyone has any questions or comments or wants to pass on some suggestions for future topics. Uh, but thank you so much, Ashley, for this presentation. Uh, this is great, lots of useful things to take away from this. And we will be posting on YouTube for those that want to rewatch or pass it on to their fellow coaches or athletes. Um, so this, yeah, this is great, great information for coaches and athletes. So definitely pass on these resources. Um, oh, we have a question. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to go open that up. Is in the chat box? Yeah. Perfect. Um, okay, so how are you motivating? So question is, um, how are you motivating people who are struggling to complete the bottom of their work priority list? Um, so those things people don't want to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is a difficult one. So, you know, I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think so coaches uh, who set things like planning aside. Yeah, absolutely. So, so maybe some of those things that you may sort of be putting aside or procrastinating on. Um, so taking the time now to be able to really get to those things. Maybe I think that's kind of what you're getting at. If not, I do apologize, but I'll speak to that. Um, some of the athletes, perfect. Some of the athletes uh, and coaches that I've worked with in the past related to this idea of um, there's some things that uh, maybe, you know, we, we know there are things that we need to do, but we're sort of procrastinating or that we're, you know, not getting to it or we're leaving it to the bottom of our list. Um, there's a couple of things. So number one, those items that get put at the bottom of the, you know, quote unquote, to do list one day, um, the first thing that I try to encourage uh, those individuals, you know, to, to do and myself as well, because I sometimes get to the point where I procrastinate is I start my list the next day with those priority items. Um, and just maybe one, right? So it, you know, you might have three items that you're kind of procrastinating on and they're kind of continually fall to the bottom of your list. Uh, in the morning, especially, there's a lot of, you know, we have a lot of space in our mind. We're very fresh, typically coming off a good night's rest, hopefully. Um, so taking one of those items and moving it to the top of the list and then starting off with just something small. So take a small step. So if this priority item that's being put to the bottom of your list is being put there because it seems like maybe it's really big or it's just something that we don't wanna do, start with a small step. So it's something like, let's say, planning for your season. Um, maybe chunk your season, as we often do, into different sections where you may have your preseason, obviously, you know, your, your, your ramp up, your, your in-season, maybe your tail down at the end, um, where we would take one specific part, maybe just a couple of months and plan for that or just take one step towards it. So maybe you're not tackling the entire piece in one sitting, 
but you can start and then it starts to seem maybe less onerous or less big as you kind of take those little steps through. The second thing is to connect back with your values. So is, let's say, you know, building a philosophy part of your value or is having, you know, whatever it is at the bottom of your list, connect it to your value. And then once we start connecting it to our values, um, we can really challenge ourselves to take committed action towards fulfilling that value. So the same way that we would sort of preach to our athletes, to take the principles off the wall and live them day in and day out, or those values off the wall that we have for our team, um, kind of push ourselves to do the same thing where we say, okay, a value of ours is to be a accountable. And part of this accountability means doing this part of the list. Um, and so today I'm going to be accountable to that value and I'm going to be committed to that action towards doing that. Sometimes just taking a step back and reevaluating those values and taking a recommitment to it and linking that part of the list to that value can help create that sense of motivation towards why that item is important on our list. Um, so that's two ways, um, hopefully, that we can start to tackle that area. One is moving that item from the bottom of the list to the top of the list so that you start with it the next day, however little, right? It doesn't need to be the entire thing. Just start with a small step and then work your way and connect it back to our value. Um, was that a second question? So sometimes the down, oh, sometimes down for the kids for kids too to reflect and miss training, um, but sometimes it does the, the other, pardon me, they fill their time with other things and end up not missing training and then quit. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So um, it could be potentially a good thing for them to be able to take a step back and relax, especially if you know this is a, an individual who you know their, their day is scheduled from wake up to sleep and they have multiple sports in there. Sometimes they can feel a bit you know, overtrained or maybe get to a bit of burnout. Um, and they're, you know, obviously, like you said, there might be some individuals where they do take that step back and, and they end up leaving the sport. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's for another sport where maybe they find a different passion in a different area or maybe a different activity where they find their passion is more than this. Um, you know, obviously if it's that they're missing this or that they leave the sport because maybe they're missing it too much, that is definitely an area where we want to be able to help that athlete find some engagement in some way with that activity. One of the things I think is important is to have some, like I agree with you about the structure, but I want them to schedule some of their, say, workout activities and and send it to me so not so much I can evaluate it but then I think it, it, yeah, there's a little bit more ownership if you go on record as saying I'm going to work out at this certain time of the day and then as well they can they can put a little check the side side that they've done it yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's a great way to create that social support system that we talked about kind of at the outset, right? That idea that, you know, that, that, that idea that we can reach out to those that are around us uh, to be able to, you know, keep us accountable or just to have those connections day to day. And so um, that's a great suggestion so that, you know, let's say you have a list and you know that this athlete wants to be working out at this time on this day, maybe you send them a message, hey, how'd your workout go today? Or if the athletes within your team, or, you know, you maybe you have a group of athletes who all sort of share this um, same training schedule, they can check in with each other. Hey, how'd your workout go today? Hey, how did this go today? Um, hey, you know, I'm feeling a little bit unmotivated do you want to get on zoom and we can do our workout together um, it is a great way to be able to keep that motivation going and stay connected yeah great suggestion what would you prioritize now would you prioritize the socialization like we I'm trying to do some zoom sessions and I'm trying not to like lecture them I'm trying to get them to interact so they have the social support of their the group that they've been in for in some cases for years and now all of a sudden boom. so i'm trying to emphasize the socialization rather than you know the, the structure of what we're actually doing in the meeting yeah without a doubt and i think you're you're right on point um really right now it's it's more important to be able to meet to be able to gather to be able to stay connected socially um like you said through those zoom meetings and and keep those connections going especially if it's a group that you've been together with for a while and people are used to having those connections it can really be a void if that's you know immediately taken away from you um, i've heard some coaches uh, that have started doing like little trivia so they'll do weekly trivia related to their sport 
sport. Um, I see a couple of you nodding might be doing that as well right now. Um, could be doing trivia just related generally to different areas that may be of interest to them. And sometimes they've had athletes, different groups of athletes or different individuals create that trivia so it's not just on the coach so maybe the coach starts it and then maybe an, a different athlete takes it up the next week and a different athlete the next week i've had some coaches talk to me about doing different zoom meetings where they send out like a little reading or a little quote and then they come together and they just talk about that quote to kind of start the activity or to end the activity um, but I, I think you're you're bang on in the sense that right now it's really more about creating the connections and creating the space for them to have those connections than it is to really structure anything, um, you know, sort of super detailed. Um, so, you know, every now and then you may want to give them something just to read or talk about, hey, how does this impact our sport? Or when we get back together, what is that we want to do? Or what are our values? But really overall, just doing little fun things to get together. Maybe it's trivia. Maybe it's, you know, reading a little book together or something um, is a great way to just sort of stay connected. Um, so Zoom gatherings, just say hi, uh, workouts, but not all are willing. Yeah, and, and, and not all are going to be willing to participate. And, and Teresa, I think that's probably the same in, in sort of quote unquote real time too. Um, you know, not everybody is, is going to be buy in to absolutely every activity that we do. Um, but hopefully, you know, we're reaching some of our athletes and maybe those other athletes that aren't involved in participating, we can follow up with maybe why, if that's appropriate, um, or maybe find other ways that we can find connections with those athletes. Um, oh, I see something else come up. Um, it would be great. Um, yeah, absolutely. Or things you can share with our social media. It's, yeah, for sure. Um, so maybe what I can do with that uh, is I can follow up with Kirsi and maybe put together um, a few different resources or a few different links that I've you know used recently or that's come to my attention um, that I found helpful. And then I can share that with, with you. And then maybe if you want to you know, send that out to, to, to individuals that are here tonight, that's, that'd be perfect. I'd certainly be willing to do that. Yeah, for sure. That sounds great. And uh, with previous presentations too, we've been just like linking some of like the apps and resources they've mentioned into the description box of our YouTube page. So for instance, um, what was it called? Oh, yeah. So I wrote down that link. So like I'll include that in the des description box. So if you want to uh, guide your athletes to our YouTube page then they can come across it that way. Perfect. That works awesome. And so I'll follow up with you then maybe uh, in the next couple of days, if that's okay, give me yeah. a couple of days to get them together Perfect. and then I'll follow up with you there. And then we can get those to you so that you guys can have those to follow out and to give to your athletes. Um, just kind of came to mind quickly. Um, a couple of other things that we've been doing recently too, with some of the athletes that I've been working with is working on um, like a, like, just just generally sharing gratitude um so a lot of times what happens is you know we can get in these situations we can really get bogged down um with everything that we see that is uncertain or that's going wrong or that's not going our way or that we're frustrated with um and even in you know in in, in sport that can be the case where we constantly think about mistakes or we constantly think about the negative things that are going on um taking a step back and just giving gratitude and being appreciative of the, the good things that are happening or the things that are, uh, you know, the people that are in our life or, or just, just anything really can be a great activity. And I can share a couple of articles that talk about gratitude and doing gratitude in, in the context of a team sport. Um, that is a, a potentially a really great activity that during your Zoom discussions um, could be a great activity to do. So just generally, you know, you could start it off or asking your athletes, okay, great. You know, what's one thing that you're grateful for today? Um, it can start to sort of prime us to look for those positive things that are happening um, and giving showing appreciation for those that are in our life or those things that are around us that bring us joy or that you know that that helps support us um, so you know we've talked about you know being grateful I actually had a team one time that did it for an entire season and every time we came together they would write a gratitude letter to somebody that they felt um, needed to be appreciated within the organization and so, you know, we'd start every session, they would break it into groups, they would send a gratitude letter to the bus drivers, to the uh, places where we had meals, to um, uh, the rink attendants, to different coaches, to the president of the university, because they always came to our games, like just across the board, alumni relations uh, individuals, like 
um, and they would give a letter and they would show gratitude each week to thank them for the the you know the input and the interest they had um, in in the in the sport and in the organization. So I know that they won't be able to do that necessarily sitting all together in a room, but it could be something that you could do just with the person daily. What are you grateful for? Oh, I'm grateful for the weather. I'm grateful for you know my my siblings. I'm grateful for the teammates. These times to get together. Um, it could be a really great activity to start your sessions. So I'll share that as well. Awesome. Yeah. I think there's another question uh, in the chat box. I don't know if you saw okay. that one from Joey. Uh, it's, it's up a bit. I okay, think. perfect. Um, so what would you do to motivate athletes that feel motivation is hard to come by uh, because there isn't yeah, set dates for competitions, um, and their sport has been canceled for the uh, for the coming months. And sports specific training has to be limited now. Um, absolutely, that's a great question. Um, and so maybe I'll just go back to some of the content uh, that was in in the presentation. One of the very first things that I would do is maybe have them sort of take a step back and evaluate where they're at currently with their performance and where the areas of need are, and then work those areas of need into potentially some goals and into a goal achievement strategy. So if their goal is, you know, to improve uh, their, their fitness or to improve a certain component of their fitness, um, then maybe they can work that into, okay, this is what I want to do by next week. So keep it short term, keep it, okay, let's make a goal for today. Let's make a goal for this week. Let's make a goal for, you know, this week and next week that you can constantly look at and develop. Um, and then uh, work that into a goal achievement strategy. So if this is where you want to get to, how are we going to get there? And then work the those hows into your daily routine. So if your how to improve your fitness is that you're going to, uh, you know, jog or go for a run or go for a bike or, um, you know, find some type, I know it may not be sports specific training, but some type of training that can um, still target that area. Um, and you may, you know, reach out to some of those individuals who are with uh, Canadian Sports Centre Atlantic or with your organization um, who are strength and conditioning trained to be able to work around. So maybe it's not a particular activity that they're used to, but we can get the same benefits from doing this activity that you have the resources for. And then once you have those into uh, your routine um, and into those goals, it becomes the process of staying accountable to it to create that motivation um, to sort of see the gains as you move forward. Uh, another way to do it is to create that social support around it. So involving maybe having an accountability buddy, another teammate or coach to be able to sort of, you know, continually check in with. Um, if you're both working towards uh, the same goal or similar goals, then you can be there to support each other and that can help create motivation. Um, and you also can go back to those values and connect the athlete with their values um, and, you know, work the athlete through showing them how making these gains now now um, are you know those those committed steps towards living out your values and then more long term um, these these individual steps can help us towards achieving our long term goals whenever those goals do come into focus so it's really about sort of putting the the um, the importance on the day to day process just like during season that's going to eventually it's kind of that that you know, that, that, uh, that metaphor that's been overused, but kind of that, uh, that iceberg, right? Uh, right now, we can really focus on everything that's underneath the iceberg. And whenever that outcome goal comes back into focus, we know we've put the efforts in place to be able to sort of be successful at that moment. But that would, yeah, that would be my best recommendation is really to work back towards finding out what needs to be done right now, finding a goal, setting a goal achievement strategy, working those achievement strategies into our daily routine, and then maybe also supporting that with some accountability buddies or some ways to keep socially connected to improve that motivation and connect it to those values. Um, was there any others? I think that might've been the last question. Just yeah, I think it was. It's mostly just like, thank you and see us and people are starting to leave. I think there's one, per one person left, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you so much, Ashley. And if anyone has any more questions, feel free to open up your mic or use the chat box. And I can stick around for a couple minutes too, if anybody has any other questions that are more specific. Or... All right, great. Thank you, Ashley. I thought you did very well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.
Yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. So our, just so everyone's aware, our next session is tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. So we're gonna be talking about nutrition, specifically relative energy deficiency in sport. So another different topic. Um, and all of our previous sessions are online on YouTube. So if you wanna check out our Canadian Sports Centre Atlantic Coaches channel, everything will be posted there, including this session, and we will include all of the resources that Ashley mentioned in the description box. So again, thank you, Ashley, and thank everyone for attending, and we hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you.